Welcome to Contextual Electronics. My name is Chris Gamble, and today we're going to be talking a little bit more about fab drawings. And I say that a little bit more. This is actually a video I made uh, back in April of 2019. This handsome devil in the black void is now a little bit better lit, and uh, we are talking again about fab drawings. We actually just sent off a design for Contextual Electronics. This is the board that we've been working on. It's the ABC board. It's a uh, Bluetooth and cellular board here. The center part breaks out, but the whole thing is actually starts as a Raspberry Pi header, so you could program the uh, NRF52 from the Raspberry Pi, and it's got communications back to it. And the whole idea is that the center part becomes a kind of a sandwich that you can put a, a sensor board you design on the back side there. So this is a new project that we have going here, and uh, you can go and check that out if you're interested. That's a, uh, a new course as part of Contextual Electronics, so anyone who has a subscription has access to this. But one of the things that we were doing as we were sending this out, as you see, this is actually the, well, maybe you can't tell, but this is actually the top layer of the board. And this is the back layer of the board and all of the RF components on the back layer of the board. And so if you've done some RF stuff in the past, or if you'd like to learn it, you can go and look at it at the course. Uh, you need to have all of the RF components and all of the controlled impedance traces referenced to a ground plane. And you want to have it directly the next layer down. So in this case, layer four is our RF uh, ground plane, or sorry, our RF um, section and all the components are on there and all, all the ground plane needs to be on layer three so we need to call that out in the drawing which is really important uh, so what we do is we actually do that in the drawing we need to have a fab drawing like we showed before and let's take a look at what that looks like in here so what we did is we actually created a footprint now that uh, can be used over and over again so to show you as much, I'll just actually go and delete this footprint here. So you see that entire section disappears. If I hit O, I can go and add a new footprint and add that right back in. So fab, fab drawing four layer metric. And then I'm actually going to put it in here so that that extra note that I put in here lines up with the ground plane. Uh, so that is here. That goes in the notes section. And now let's zoom in and see what's actually on this uh, section here. So we have uh, our standard stack up. This is actually using the stack up from the fab house that we're using, which is a popular online uh, fab fab house, right? So that's actually making the board. And so what we did is we actually made this uh, stack up to match what they give, because then if we wanted to go and send it to a different fab house in the future, we want to make sure that the people that are doing the cam or the processing of the Gerber files will know that we want to have the uh, the following stack up, right? So we have silk screen on here. We list the file name with it, right? So material and type and file name thickness and the dielectric constant. And so basically, so we have uh, our solder mask here. This is, oh, these are backwards, oops. <laughs> uh, so this needs to move down here and this needs to go up here. So I'll go and fix that on the uh, the uh, the drawing as well, or the uh, footprint. But uh, these are the wrong names here. I wanna make sure you get that right. Or else that would look like a really weird board. Um, <laughs> just make sure they're okay down here as well. Yeah, and that looks okay. Yep, that looks okay. Uh, and basically, so then we have all of our uh, thicknesses here. In the case of the prepreg, which is that material between layer one and layer two, it's a specific type of material, in this case, 2-2313. And uh, we want it to be a thickness of 0.1 millimeters and the dielectric constant 4.05. If a cam engineer looks at this and they say, hey, actually, this isn't the material we're using and it's a little bit different, then what I, all I want them to do is I want them to call me. I want them to email me or call me and say, hey, it's a little different than your drawing. Is that what you want? And that's great. That's the check. That's the, that's the reason to have this in your Gerber files. And so uh, this actually is all in the Gerber files. You can also have notes up here. and uh, Whole locations are in a separate... Uh, drill file and then edge.cuts file as well. And basically that says, look, don't draw, don't use this drawing. Don't try and pull stuff out of here. Use that file that's in there. You could put other stuff in here as well if you're, you know, trying to use certain standards, uh, you know, IPC standards or other type of standards that you need to do. You can say must comply with standard, blah, 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 blah over here as well. And then we'll have all of this in here. So when we go, so we can do two things. One, this will generate as a Gerber, like we usually do when we generate Gerbers, right? Well, this will be part, as long as you have it selected, the drawings layer, that will be output as a Gerber file. And so we can go and look at that there. But then we can also generate a PDF here as well. So if you go and print, we can say drawings layer, and we also want the edge cuts layer. And then we want to print the border and title block that'll give the red stuff around the edge here. And then uh, we can go and print this here. So let's go print to PDF. We're gonna uh, give it a different date here. So today is the uh, ninth, or no, it's the eighth, 0808. And we'll just leave it like that. And then we'll go and find that drawing. Uh, 
bees. And then output Gerber's are they. And here's our drawing. And you see all the stuff comes through as a uh, black and white PDF drawing now. This is something you could send to just about anybody. And basically now they know what the stack up looks like. They know what the outlines are. If there's any critical dimensioning here as well, you can also have that. And, um, and uh, yeah, it's good to go. It also has the drawing date and all the other stuff down here. And uh, yeah, this is a really useful document because like I said, when you are sending off a board, so we might be using an online board house one day and then we send it off to, a, you know, maybe we're going to get a bunch of panels made with some other vendor the next day. You want to make sure that the stack up is exactly the same. You want to just use this to communicate, hey, look, I need this certain thickness between layer one and layer two. I need this dielectric because I calculated my traces to be a certain width to get a 50 ohm trace. I need to make sure that stuff's all good. Uh, and then also in this case, hey, I need layer three to be the ground layer. Make sure you apply the ground layer so the GND, which is the uh, the name of the Gerber file, is one of the GND.GBR. That's one of the files we sent. Don't apply that to layer two like you normally would. Make sure that's applied to layer three. That's really, really important here. And so a, a, uh, a fab drawing allows for that. So we'd print a PDF like we showed here, and then we'd also generate a Gerber. And so there would just be a, uh, a drawings Gerber file as well. And if you look at that in a Gerber viewer, it's going to pull up all the same information. So if you are doing a... Uh, if you're doing a board and you're not just using, an on, you know, a lot of the times, you know, the online providers, if you're just kind of uploading a board to a service, you're just going to get what you get there. You just, you know, upload it and it's good to go. That's not traditionally how it's done. And it's, you know, I think a lot of things are shifting to these kind of set, um, you know, set stack ups and, and things like that. You kind of, like I said, you get what you get. And for most people, it's not a big deal. But as you start moving in RF stuff, as we've been doing on the contextual electronics courses, or if you have other high speed, you know, controlled impedance traces, you need to start thinking about the stack up. And this is a great way to communicate that to your board house to make sure your board comes out exactly how you want it. So that's all for now. We'll have some more videos about doing uh, high speed, high complexity boards here on contextual electronics in the future. If you're interested, go and check out that new course. It's called the ABC board, and we'll have a link to it down below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.